fractions, how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Hopefully the methods that are explained here will make the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of fractions relatively simple to apply. Down on the left, we have one-fifth plus three-eighths. The method that we will use can be abbreviated as CCOP. This stands for Chris Cross Over the Product. You will notice that eight times one is eight. This is called the Chris, and you put it up to the left. The cross, five times three, 15. You put that up to the right. You will add eight and 15 to obtain 23. That's the numerator of the answer. And to find the denominator, you will do five times eight, which is 40. This method can be used to add all fractions. However, there might be another way to do certain additions. Notice that in the CCOP method, you perform three multiplications to form the numbers that make up the final answer. Now we have one-fifth plus three-tenths. You could think of this as a common denominator approach. Notice that five times two is 10. We can take the fraction, one-fifth, we can multiply one by two and also five by two and you get an equivalent fraction, two-tenths. Now, what we have is two-tenths plus three-tenths. You can think of this as two out of 10 plus three out of 10. Altogether, we have five out of 10. Notice that five goes into 10 two times. So our final answer is a half. This method is used when one number, the denominator, times a whole number equals the other denominator. In this particular problem, we have 5 over 23 plus 4 over 23. You can think of it as 5 out of 23 plus 4 out of 23 which altogether is 9 out of 23. So you don't have to do much when the two denominators are the same. The method for the subtraction of fractions is the same as the method for addition. Notice that the two denominators are 5 and 8. There's no whole number times 5 that gives you 8, so we will apply the crisscross method. The first multiplication, 8 times 4, goes up to the left, the criss, which is 32. The second multiplication, 5 times 3, is the cross, 15. Subtract the two numbers, 32 minus 15 is 17. For the denominator of the answer, 5 times 8 is 40. And so we have a final answer of 17 over 40. This method for 3 fifths minus 3 tenths is like the addition problem. 5 times 2 is 10, so we will change 3 fifths into an equivalent fraction, 6 tenths. So now we have 6 tenths minus 3 tenths. Think of it as 6 out of 10 minus 3 out of 10. That leaves 3 out of 10. Now we have 5 over 23 minus 4 over 23. The denominators are the same. Think of it as 5 out of 23 minus 4 out of 23, which leaves 1 out of 23. Now we will add two mixed numbers. The method is very simple. We add the whole number parts, and then we add the fractions and put the two together. So we have 12 and 5 over 23 plus 4 and 4 over 23. 12 plus 4, the whole number part, is 16. Now we have to add 5 over 23 plus 4 over 23. That's 9 over 23. We put the 2 together, and then we have 16 and 9 over 23 for the final answer. Now we will subtract two mixed numbers. The method is very simple. We subtract the whole numbers, and we subtract the fractions and put the 2 together. So the whole number parts are 12 and 4. 12 minus 4 is 8. Now we do 5 over 23 minus 4 over 23. That's 1 over 23. The final answer is 8 and 1 over 23. Sometimes when we subtract mixed numbers, we are left with a fraction where the numerator is negative, And we don't like to have mixed numbers with negative 
fractions. So, in this example, the whole number parts are 12 and 4. 12 minus 4 is 8. You have the fractions 5 over 23 and 7 over 23. Now, 5 over 23 minus 7 over 23 is negative 2 over 23. So, in order to get the mixed number so it looks normal, we take 1 away from 8, 7. You have a denominator of 23. The numerator for the answer is simply 23 minus 2, which is 21. Final answer is 7 and 21 over 23. This is a very simple way of converting mixed numbers with negative numerator, positive denominator, and changing it so it has a mixed number with a positive fraction. The multiplication of fractions is relatively simple. We simply take the product of the numerators over the product of the denominators for the final answer. And this is a key. Cancel if you can. Our first example, 5 11 times 2 7 5 doesn't go into 7. 2 doesn't go into 11. 5 11 cannot be simplified. 2 7 cannot be simplified, so simply do. 5 times 2 is 10. 11 times 7 is 77, and that's your final answer. And our next one, 15 over 64 times 8 over 45. We should realize that 15 goes into 45 three times. The 3 is on the bottom. 15 goes into 45 three times. Also, 8 goes into 64, and the 8 is on the bottom. There is no number on top. The 15 and the 8 have been canceled. However, when there's no number on the top, put a 1. 8 times 3, the new numbers for the bottom, is 24, and our final answer is 1 over 24. You might wonder if we had had a problem where, say, the final answer was 3, and there's on top, and there's no number on the bottom, you could put a 1, but 3 over 1 is 3. So you don't have to worry about it when the 1 is on the bottom, or there's no number on the bottom. Everything has been canceled. Now for the multiplication of mixed numbers. Our method is relatively simple. Change the mixed numbers into improper fractions. After you do that, you can cancel if you can. So in our problem here, 2 and a half times 2 and 3 fifths. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, so 2 and a half is 5 over 2. Do the same thing for 2 and 3 fifths. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13 over 5. We see we have a 5 on top, a 5 on bottom. Cancel the 5s, and we have 13 over 2. This is an improper fraction. We don't want to leave answers as improper fractions, so we're going to convert 13 over 2 into a mixed number. Here's how we do it. 2 goes into 13 six times. You have a remainder of 1, so it's 1 out of 2 that's left over. Final answer is 6 and a half. Here's a problem. Multiplication of a mixed number by a whole number. You can still do the problem like in the previous one. You can change the mixed number into an improper fraction and you can change the whole number into a fraction by putting the whole number over 1. This is another approach and you can actually do these mentally. The method is to use the distributive law. What is that law? Say we have a plus b times c. The c is applied to both a and b with multiplication. So we have a c, a times c, plus b c, b times c. Note that two and a half is the same as 2 plus a half. So in our problem, 2 and a half times 6. Notice ahead of time that 2 goes into 6 three times. So we do 2 times 6 plus a half times 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 goes into 6 three times, so 12 plus 3 is 15, and that's our final answer. This method is very easy when the denominator of the mixed number goes into the whole number. Now to divide fractions. Our first step is to write the problem so it is vertical, and then we do the outer product over the inner product. Most people call this outies over any's. So, with the problem, 3 fifths divided by 7 eighths, 
the first step is to write it vertically. So we have 3 over 5 divided by 7 over 8. So we're asking how many times does 7 eighths go into 3 fifths? We now form Odie's 3 times 8. Don't work it out yet. So we have 3 times 8 on the top. The innies is on the bottom, 5 times 7, the inner product. Now, you look at the numbers. Is there any possible cancellation? No. So our final answer is simply 24 over 35. Notice that 24 over 35 is a proper fraction, so you don't have to do anything. We are done. If the fraction had come out to an improper fraction, then we would have changed it into a mixed number. Now we will divide mixed numbers. The method is very simple. We still write our problems vertically. Change the mixed numbers or whole numbers to improper fractions and then we proceed with outies over innies. So two and a half divided by two and three fifths. Write the problem vertically. Notice that two and a half is five over two and 2 and 3 fifths is 13 over 5. So now we're set to do the final step. So we form Odie's, 5 times 5. We form Innie's, 2 times 13. Nothing cancels. Our final answer is 25 over 26. How to compare fractions. This is a breeze. Simply form the Chris and the Cross. So 8 times 1 is 8. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 is bigger. So 15 is on the side of the bigger fraction. So 3 eighths is greater than 1 fifth. You can also rewrite this as 1 fifth is less than 3 eighths. Now we will compare fractions with negative numerators. We simply use the same method, the crisscross method. 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Negative 8 is greater than negative 15. Thus, negative 1 over 5 is greater than negative 3 over 8. You could also write this as negative 3 eighths is less than negative 1 fifth. With the crisscross method, negatives are not allowed in the denominator. Note that 4 divided by negative 5 is the same as negative 4 divided by 5. So if you have a fraction with a positive numerator and a negative denominator, simply f move the negative sign to the numerator and a positive sign for the denominator. Comparison of mixed numbers. If A and B are positive numbers and A is less than B, A over B, the fraction is a proper fraction. Then, proper fractions are less than 1. Observe that. 5 and a half is greater than 5. 5 and 1 over 113 is greater than 5. Our next one, 5 and 1 over 1,111 is greater than 4 and 99 over 101 because 99 over 101 is a proper fraction. It is less than 1, so 4 and a number less than 1 is less than 5 and less than 5 in any proper fraction along with the 5. A final note. You might have noticed that in the addition and subtraction of fractions and mixed numbers, at no time was the phrase least common denominator mentioned. This is an approach that a lot of math books present for the addition and subtraction of fractions. It is very tedious and sometimes it is extremely cumbersome to apply. The method is solid. However, sometimes you just cannot apply it because you do not know how to break up the denominator. So if we were to take examples with fractions with very long denominators, say the denominators were 50 digits in length, most human beings cannot break up the denominators in order to use the least common denominator approach. With the CCOP method, crisscross over the product, all fractions can be added, subtracted, along with the mixed numbers in a very simple manner.